I mean, Ken said that very early on, that it was, you know, fathers and sons was what this was about. And I think, you know, whether you're playing a god or, a, uh, you know, <laughs> a human or whatever, you just, you make it real and, uh, and relatable. And that was the smart thing about this story. It wasn't, you know, I mean, it was, the backdrop was a film about gods, but it was about, you know, human beings at the core of it and then the relationships, fathers and sons, you know. So uh, at the beginning of the film, Thor... Um, comes in as a brash, cocky young guy um, with a, you know, a ton of power at his fingertips um, and is about to you know, basically become the, the ruler of the kingdom and you know, the, that, that realm. Uh, and I think Odin sees a lot of things in Thor that, uh, you know, that he, he was full of you know, when he was younger and not so good things, you know, the, the sort of uh, act before he thinks about it kind of deal. You know? and, and, um, so he's sort of questioning for if he's ready to be, you know, to become the, the, the you know, the next king, and um, and so that's it's all about sort of him learning some humility, you know, and it comes to the point when Thor goes against his father's word and, and the way things are done, and sort of takes off on his own and uh, creates chaos, and then is is punished for it by uh, being sent to Earth as a mortal to to learn the lesson, you know. That was what was so interesting about Ken doing a movie like this, you know, his background is his character and Shakespeare and, you know, to come and do a huge blockbuster type film like this, I think, is, was, was genius on their behalf, you know, um, just because you have the two worlds, you know, meld beautifully, you know, why, why, why can't you have the blockbuster without, you know, really strong characters and, you know, and, and subtext and, and with someone like Ken. It's a beautiful blend of sort of science fiction and then the Viking era. It was the first time, I think, you know, uh, acting that I had put on a costume and really felt like the character, you know. I mean, it just, it sold the picture, you know. And I think the, the film is constantly contrasting. It has a you know, sort of beautiful element about it from, you know, Asgard to Earth and then from, you know, gods in these costumes to Earth people, you know, and human beings. And, and with the fight sequences, you know, you have big dramatic flying and, 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 you know, stunts and magic and all sorts of things and then hand-to-hand -hand combat, you know, with a bunch of guys, you know, beating the hell out of each other. The um, Thor and Jane stuff was, was, you know, it was fantastic. You know, it was great. Natalie is... You know, beautiful and talented and, you know, all of the above. Uh, you know, so working with her was just, was, uh, was a dream. The thing that really made me want to work on it was Ken's involvement. I mean, I thought it was such an interesting and um, unexpected idea to have Kenneth Branagh directing the Marvel um, Thor. Uh, and it was so exciting to um, have the opportunity to, to come to work with Ken every day and, and it's been exactly that. I mean, it's, he's really been the, the center of how interesting this project is. Well, Jane is very passionate and very focused on her research and um, probably on the fringe of um, astrophysics um, that she's believes in things that that a lot of her colleagues might find kind of nutty and um, obviously Thor's arrival sort of confirms and demonstrates a lot of the things she she believes in um, or or supposes to be true and um, she can be awkward and clumsy in her her personal life probably because she's spent so much time focused on her work. He really has worked hard to create this character and um, he's really, really talented, he's amazing. And um, yeah, it's, it's really fun to watch him work, especially knowing this is sort of one of his first big things. Well, it's really exciting to get to be part of this sort of family of um, films because I really feel like they're taking uh, the right approach and that they use there's a lot of humor in the movies they're not these sort of like too serious for their own good um, action movies so they're really really entertaining either I got fatter since we set the sh thing up or he shrinks the outfits I suspect it's a little bit of both what happens then is that 
it takes you know quite a you know sort of sausage factory ethos to get into it, and we squash the actor in, and then thoop, boing, I spring up, and I'm in now half the suit, and I wear the oldest pants I can find in, bo- in dirty shoes because it just gets horribly gluey and messy and baby powdery from there. We sit in the chair. And um, V. Neal and the genius Aryan, who has both sculpted and is doing his first makeup job, putting this on me. We sit down and we start painting me blue. Because underneath the blue appliances, if there's a sh- the slightest tint of pink, it flashes through. So we have to paint me blue and then put on the blue appliance. I'm glued in to a bald cap. I'm gl- my face is glued down. It's then painted blue, uh, neck and all of that. <clears throat> we then slide a neck piece over, which is made in one vacuum-sealed extraordinary piece that they sort of stretch out, slide around, and it sucks back into shape. And we delicately glue that. We glue the suit to me, the neck to the suit, then the neck up to here, and then we start applying one piece after another. It's amazing to be a part of the Warriors 3. Uh, he is larger than life um, in every aspect. Uh, he is sort of self, very self-opinionated. He's a great raconteur and storyteller amongst the others. And uh, uh, if they did battle and say there was like five horsemen or whatever they were doing battle with, all of a sudden the field would be filled of 50 horsemen with archers and lanterns. And it would, he basically will embellish, embellish these, these tales and turning them into the great tales that would be told round the fire in Valhalla and stuff like that, you know. Um, always with, uh, you know, uh, him being sort of crucial to the outcome, obviously. Um, so he basically eats these stories up as he would, uh, as he would eat his food and, and his wine and his life, basically. He has this, uh, this appetite that is, I think, is infectious. With Ken's experience doing Shakespeare, um, Ken has, a, has a, a, an incredible um, grasp and understanding of what it takes to um, maintain a, 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 the life and the passage, the passage of, of lives of these um, of people who are operating on a larger scale than outside of normality, you know. And in Shakespeare, obviously, you kings, queens, and generals, and the shiftings of power between countries and continents, and the stakes are incredibly high because it's not just the individuals involved, it's, it's their realm and all the subjects of their people and all this. So people who are taking on huge, huge responsibilities and subjects. Um, and yet these people are still human beings. They are, you know, they've got to live and breathe. And otherwise, if you don't care about them, you, you know, it's, uh, uh, if you're not, you're not getting in, inside them, you're not being taken along the story with them. So uh, he uh, sort of driving or steering this, sh- this huge ship, as it were, has is, is, is been fantastic. Being able to grasp that whole imaginary spectrum that's going to be enhanced, as I say, later on, whatever, but uh, also um, the validity and fleshing out of these characters in order to tell the story. So I think he, it's, it's been wonderful, and he's, he really brings such an enthusiasm and a plum to it. Chris is wonderful. Chris is really, he's, uh, he's one of the sweetest guys I've ever met, and I think what he's got is that he's got that, um, that perfect quality for Thor in that he's, He's a, uh, a, a, a guy who's, who's, who's on the cusp of, uh, of owning his, his destiny. Um, and I think what uh, he brings, what I, this, this innocence and purity that, that, that Thor needs, um, but it's just not there yet. But he's, he, there's, a, there's a process he's got to go through. There's a, um, you know, he's got all those pure qualities, all those things, but it's all fire and brimstone, and it's all like, you know, out there, let's do it. And he's right, buddy. There are other ways of doing it, a more uh, a necessarily mature way. So it's a kind of rites of passage for somebody who's still got right in that core, that, that purity that the Thor story has.